Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be addressing some disinformation that made its way all the way into my Discord server for the second time. The first time I was hoping I would never see it again, but evidently that didn't pan out, which is why I'm now making a video about it, so that I hopefully never have to see it again. And that disinformation is this statement right here. Uh, Intel, starting with 12th gen, moved the I.O. off the CPU and now uses the chipset for all the USB connections. Okay, well, if that's true, um, a second gen Intel motherboard should have some USB ports connected directly to the CPU, right? So here's a second gen Intel motherboard. And what you'll notice is that the CPU has a BCLK input, it has a memory controller, it has some PCIe Express lanes, and it doesn't have any USB ports connected directly to it. No, all of the USB ports on the second gen Intel motherboard are connected to the chipset. Right? You've got these, and you've got these. And evidently, Gigabyte decided that there wasn't enough USB ports built directly into the chipset itself, so we have uh, Renesas USB controllers, and then some USB port hubs um, to get eight USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports. So, um, yeah, um, there are there are no USB ports built into a second gen Intel CPU. Uh, and here's another second gen Intel motherboard. This is a Z68 XP-UD4, and it's just the same thing because it's second gen Intel, right? Like, it's not going to change. VCLK input, memory controller, PCIe Express, no USB ports connected directly to the CPU. All of the USB ports are coming in through the chipset. And again, we have some extra USB controllers because the Z680 chipset didn't have native 3.0 support. So, yeah. But, you know, maybe this statement is referring to, like, newer CPUs than second gen. Like, maybe second gen is too old and is not actually what this statement is referring to. Um, so here's fourth gen. Which is the same thing again. We have a BCLK input, we have a memory controller, we have some display outputs for the integrated graphics, we have some PCIe Express for, you know, PCIe devices, uh, but we don't have any USB ports. Again, all of the USB ports on a Z97 motherboard are connected directly to the... Well, actually, they're not even directly. Like, again, we have a USB hub over here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're directed, to, I mean, uh, connected to the Z97 chipset. They are not connected to the CPU. Um, okay, but maybe 4th gen is also older than what this, you know, statement is trying to refer to. So what about 10th gen? PCIe, BCLK input, memory controller, display output for the iGPU, and no USB ports connected directly to the CPU. No. Again, all of the USB ports connect to the chipset. It's almost like the whole point of the chipset is to provide USB port functionality, as well as like SATA and a bunch of other I.O. Um, so, you know, and then if we look at Z690, like Z690 actually looks extremely similar to Z490 because, yeah, nothing changed in terms... I mean, well, one thing changed, DMI 4.0 instead of DMI 3.0, but other than that, it's the same thing. The CPU itself has some PCIe on it, right? Like PCIe 5.0, PCIe 4.0, a BCLK input, a memory controller, a display output for the iGPU, and no USB ports. Because the USB ports are again connected direct, like all of them are again connected to the chipset. So this statement is a lie. Well, I mean, it depends. If this person read a bunch of motherboard manuals and then still made this statement, then they're li a liar. And if they didn't know any better, then they're just spreading disinformation. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is just wrong. There is no, like, from 2nd gen all the way to 14th gen, you never had USB ports connected directly to the CPU. And there is a very simple reason for this. Because from 2nd gen until 14th gen, all those Intel CPUs are monolithic. Which means, from a manufacturing perspective, the last thing you want to do is bloat the die size with a bunch of USB ports. Because basically, with... Uh, like a second gen CPU, if you want to put those USB ports on that CPU, that CPU is getting physically bigger, which makes it more uh, expensive to manufacture. 
That's the whole reason why this is set up this way. You have all the performance critical functionality built into the CPU because it's critical to performance. And then all of the IO lives on the chipset so that it's not bloating the die size. Um, right? That's like the whole reason why the chipset even exists. Because <laughs> if like, if there wasn't a manufacturing, like, if there weren't any ma manufacturing downsides to integrating the I.O. directly into the CPU, like, they would do that. But there are. Like, it, from a manufacturing perspective, you do not want to be wasting die space on USB ports. Um, right? The same thing for Haswell is just, again, this is a monolithic CPU. You don't want to be bloating the die size of your monolithic CPU with a bunch of USB ports when those USB ports could live on a significantly cheaper to manufacture chipset, right? That's the whole idea. Like the chipsets, like if I'm not mistaken, Intel was selling Z97 chipsets to the motherboard manufacturers for like $20 a piece or something. Like, whereas the CPU, I mean, the CPU doesn't cost its retail cost to manufacture, but, you know, like... The chipset is a lot smaller than the CPU and a lot cheaper than the CPU. And that's why it gets all like that's the whole point of it is like we put the IO onto a nice cheap little chip and it doesn't affect the manufacturing cost of the CPU itself. Um, only the important stuff like the memory controller and the PCIe get to be part of the CPU. The USB ports, not important. They get to live on the chipset. And this is true, you know, for like second gen, fourth gen. 10th gen, because again, 10th gen's monolithic, so the USB ports don't live on the CPU because they would bloat the die size. 11th gen, monolithic, USB ports don't live on the CPU because they would bloat the die size. Um, 12th gen, the USB ports don't live on the chipset because if they were on the CPU, they would bloat the die size, because 12th gen is monolithic. Um, 13th gen is also monolithic, 14th gen is monolithic, but Z890 does actually have some USB ports built into the CPU. Why? Because 15th gen isn't monolithic. So it no longer matters if you add some USB ports because it's not actually bloating the die size of the CPU cores themselves. Um, in Intel's case, like Intel has like a really uh, extreme approach to the to like chiplet design where they've like chipleted basically everything. Um, and so I'm not 100% certain on how exactly this is implemented but like this is probably completely separate like this is like a separate little chip from the rest of the cpu um where this, whereas on like you know like on z890 the memory controller is a separate chip from the cpu cores uh, and the same is true for ryzen right ryzen has uh basically a chipset with a memory controller strapped to it uh, and then it has the cores as a separate thing. And that's why, like, you have AM5 CPUs have all these USB ports connected directly to them because there's basically a chipset with a memory controller strapped to the CPU. Um, so, like, the like basically this statement is completely backwards. The norm, historically speaking, was for all the I.O. to be as far away from the, like, to be not part of the CPU it's only a relatively recent development that you start get, seeing USB ports built into the CPU. Because another, another issue is not just like the manufacturing cost of the silicon of the CPU itself. The pin count of the socket gets higher and higher the more stuff you st put on the CPU, right? So like, and USB ports aren't exactly a high pin count connector, but it's like, yeah, the, you know, if we move these into the socket, we're going to have to put more pins in the socket. And that makes the socket more expensive. Um, not by much, but it does add some cost, right? So, um, yeah, like with monolithic CPUs, you have basically every reason in the world to keep the USB ports as far away from the, well, on a separate chip that isn't the CPU as much as possible, right? And technically, even with Ryzen and Arrow Lake, like those USB ports aren't part of the same chip as the CPU cores. They're a separate chip. Um, so... Yeah, so so this this statement is it's just wrong, like it's just completely wrong, and I never ever want to see it again because this is ridiculous. Like, come on, people, just read the freaking motherboard manuals, or like I imagine Intel even has documentation covering it. This, but the motherboard block diagrams are, in my opinion, the most like best visual representation of this. So, like you know, read, damn it, just read.
instead of just regurgitating disinformation that like i i know where this comes from but like man um anyway so that's it for the video um if you'd like to support the channel there's links in the description you could check those out that would be very much appreciated and uh, i guess thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>